Hi viewers, my name is Marty Caballero. I'm the managing editor at BevNet.com and I am here in Atlanta, Georgia for the 2019 National Association of Convenience Stores trade show, better known as NAX. And I'm very pleased to be joined by James Ford, who's the VP of Category Strategic Advisory at the Coca-Cola Company. How's it going today? Good to see you, Marty. Thanks for being here. Good to see you, too. Now, I mean, Nax, obviously a big show for Coca-Cola. What are you guys sort of focusing on for this year? Sure, I'm glad you asked, Marty. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to do at Coca-Cola is be our customer's best business partner. Part of that is making sure that we can drive their beverage growth faster than the average in their store. I'm proud to say in 2018, Coca-Cola was able to do that. We grew beverages at two and a half times the average for the category, providing over $500 million worth of growth. I'm happy to report in 2019 we're doing the same as well, which really brings us to 2020 and how do we really keep the momentum going. And that really comes down to two things. One, the innovation that we're bringing our customers. As a total beverage company, we have exciting innovations across both soft drinks and you take a look at juices, water, coffee, tea. We have about 12 new drinks that we're offering uh, at the show this year. That's the most innovation that we've ever launched at NAX before. So we're extremely happy about what we're going to be providing our customers. And then to the second end is that how do we manage, help our customers manage uh, with business insights all this flood of new innovation. So we have some great information around beverage segmentation to talk about how they should be assorting the SKUs in their store across all the various points of interruption, coal vault, end caps, displays, front end. So this is what we're going to be talking to customers about uh, during the show. So obviously the big innovation being showcased here is the U.S. debut of Coca-Cola Energy. Uh, BevNet readers are familiar with this. We've been tracking this for the course of the year when it debuted in Europe, I believe in April. That's correct. Um, what are some of the main takeaways and insights that you guys have, have gleaned from, uh, from its launch in Europe? Yeah, we've been very happy with the launch in Europe. The initial distribution and trial has been very, very good. But one of the things that we're focusing at Coca-Cola is to be an iterative company. So we've learned some things from Europe. And when we brought Coke Energy here to the US, we said, OK, what is it that consumers are really looking for? And there's two things that we really heard from our consumers. One that says, I really like the idea of Coke Energy, but I want to really make sure that you know, we get the taste of Coca-Cola that comes through in the product. So we made sure that we reformulated the product to really kick up that taste of Coca-Cola. The second thing that we heard is that even though we love the taste of Coca-Cola, we want to have some variety as well. So actually in the US, we're launching both Coca-Cola and Coke Cherry and both zero and full sugar variety. So these are two different things that we've done and learned from our Europe launch, which makes us very you know, happy that this is going to be a good successful launch here in the US. We were talking a little bit about it before we got on camera here. It's, it's sort of, you mentioned incremental to the category and sort of bringing uh, you know, Coke drinkers into this energy category as well as bringing sort of uh, already energy drinkers sort of into a new product. Exactly. So this is the first time that Coke has really expanded into the energy category. And we really are aiming to give you know, our shoppers basically the energy they want with the taste that they love. So that's basically our proposition. When you take a look at the energy category right now, it has less than 50% of households are actually in the category. And there's a lot of reasons why that is. Existing consumers love the category. They consume it at high levels. But those have other consumers that say, hey, right now, the offerings in the category aren't really for me, whether it's the taste profile, the brand brands or whatever. So basically, we want to take the permissibility and the expansiveness of Coca-Cola, combine it with the energy drink credentials of 114 milligrams of caffeine on a 12-ounce sleek can, combined with Corona and B vitamins to give them that energy cocktail for the boost that they need. So we're really trying to bring in new consumers into the category, incremental drinkers to expand the growth of this category. And of course, we may have existing energy drink consumers increase their consumption, but really expandability of the category is what we're all about. And of course, uh, Coca-Cola also a partner with Monster Energy, another uh, player in this category. How are you guys positioning yourself to to both sort of have room to grow and both benefit from uh, from the partnership that continues on? Absolutely. We're thrilled of our partnership with Monster. As you know, we have an 18% stake in Monster Energy. Uh, bottlers deliver Monster on our trucks. We in no way want to slow down the growth engine that is Monster. And as I mentioned, with less than 50% of the households in the category, we think there's plenty of room for both these brands to grow and exist at the same time. So we really see this as an additive proposition, not an either or, but we see both brands really growing together well in the category. Now, pivoting a little bit from energy, but sort of staying close, coffee, another yeah. uh, category with a lot of development there. How are you guys 
positioning the portfolio to sort of be diversified and for different brands to work in different sort of uh, use occasions, different retailers? Because you have, there's several brands in the, in the coffee portfolio. Yes, we have several brands. Obviously, Duncan and uh, McDonald's are two of the brands that uh, we work very, very closely with. You might have heard the news about launching our launch of Honest uh, Cold Brew Coffee, right? So all these brands can play together. We know that the coffee category is very broad with lots of different taste profiles and lots of different uh, price ranges. So obviously, there's a lot of room for segmentation within the category. Category. One of the things that we're really happy to be launching this year is Dunkin' uh, Donuts cold brew coffee. We know that cold brew is a very fast growing segment. It's up 73% year to date. And it's really for consumers that want that coffee taste but don't want all the calories and the sugar that come along with it. So that's what we're offering with the two uh, varieties of Dunkin' Donuts that we have essentially. A great tasting coffee product with 73% less calories and 63% less sugar than some what standard product. So that's great new exciting innovation which is going to help grow our category category that's going to exist side by side with McDonald's, McCafe, and other coffee brands that we have. And I believe last year we saw Far Coast uh, debuting some coffee products. Can you give us an update on, on the status of those? Yes, we have no actually, we're going to put uh, Far Coast on a delay right now and we may do something down the road with it, but no, no news on that right now. You mentioned also uh, innovation in juice and water. Tell us a little bit of what else you guys have been working on uh, at the booth here. Yeah, so we're really excited about what we're doing for Smart Water, for example. So Smart Water is the biggest premium brand in the category, and this year we actually expanded the brand from the base brand into alkaline and antioxidant versions, okay, which really expanded the number of consumers that wanted to get into our brand and into the category. So what we're doing for 2020 is what we heard from our consumers is that, hey, I love the taste of Smart Water. I drink a lot of water. It would be great if I had a little bit of variety, uh, you know, in you know what I'm drinking. So this year we're launching four flavors of basically flavor flavor-infused smart water, and we're sampling at our booth. It tastes just absolutely tremendous and gives that smart water consumer a little bit of variety throughout the course of the day. So that's an example of one of our additional still innovation items that we're launching this year. I also wanted to ask about HealthAid, another company that you guys are affiliated with. What do you see as sort of the uh, you know trajectory for that company in this convenience store channel or for kombucha in general? Yeah, so kombucha is obviously a very fast-growing category, and we're happy to be partnered with HealthAid. We've actually increased our ownership position with them over time, and obviously there's an opportunity for all beverages in a convenience store. We just need to make sure that we match up the right beverage to the right consumer, and that's actually what our beverage segmentation helps us do. In some stores, kombucha is going to sell well. In other stores, there might be other products that would sell better. So making sure that we identify the right products in the right stores is part of the business solutions we want to bring our customers. So in short, HealthAid is a great brand. It's one of the fastest growing kombucha brands. You know, we plan to see where we can take it down the road. I know every year we, when we come and visit you guys, you guys are always uh, showing new technology, new data, new analytics that you guys are using in this particular channel to, as you mentioned, sort of better serve your customers here. What are you sort of working on currently and what are some of the maybe problems you're looking to solve for those customers? Sure, so the challenge our customers face is that every year it shows like this, 5,000 new products get introduced and that's on top of 45,000 products that already exist. So as you can imagine, coal vaults aren't getting bigger, so where do we find space for all this innovation? And not every product has to exist in every store and that's where our beverage segmentation work really takes place. Essentially by taking a look at store level demand data and pairing it up with with demographic data, we've identified clusters of where products ideally sell best. Then we can go to our customers and match up where their stores are versus our clusters to show what the demonstrable differences are, not just in assortment, but also things like point of sale as well. We know in some stores, Smart Water is a better point of sale, in other stores it's going to be Powerade. So it's really taking a 360 view of the space, the assortment, and the point of sale that our customers should be activating in the store so you can get the most value out of their value. Valuable space. James, thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure talking to you. Enjoy the rest of your show. Uh, Marty Caballero, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.